Hello, this is Dr. Mewborn, and this is History of the Baptist. Today we're in Lesson 26, and we're talking about Baptists in Canada. Um, this is a very special lesson for me. I've got a dear friend that actually lives in Toronto, and God is doing a, a great work through him in Toronto and uh, the surrounding areas there for the gospel. And so this is a very special lesson, but I want to... Um, I want to go ahead and jump into to the lesson today as we talk a little bit of the things that, that God has done there in the Baptist life um, or through Baptist life uh, to a lot of the people there. So let's get started. Baptist in Canada. Thoughts about Canada first. I think that's important for us to look at. It divided into ten provinces and three it's divided into ten provinces and three territories. It's the second largest country in the entire world. Russia is the first. It is larger than the United States of America, and it's a country with the longest coastline in the world. And so here, it's very small in this slide, but Canada is a massive, a massive country. And you can see with um, all the water that's there, uh, I believe they have the most amount of lakes as well, freshwater lakes, uh, and the, the, the most amount uh, of, um, of actually fresh water there as well but this is a very cold place um, vast place and as you can see coastline all around there it's just on the, on the north end of the United States of America um, as we continue on we see that uh, it's considered the most educated country in the world over half of its residents have college degrees many people probably would never know that the U.S.-Canada border is the longest international border in the world, and it lacks military defense. It doesn't have a strong military defense across the border, which is interesting um, that it's never been needed. It's been one of those great relationships that's uh, with America that, that nobody has ever had any problems in the past except the Revolutionary War and, and times of war and the founding of this, of this, uh, this country. But... At this point, there's not a lot of struggle there in many places. Toronto was voted the most diverse city in the world as of February 2017, and, and I think there's also some statistics that said that in 2016, but it is a very diverse place. We talk a lot about this education. A lot of people go there to, um, to, for education, but also at the same time, the whole world is coming there. I've been to Toronto, and... Toronto is a place that is full of so many languages. My friend that pastors a church in Toronto, his church, which is less than 100 people, is, I believe, the people in there, there's 30 different languages represented, or people from 30 different countries represented in a less than 100 or 100 person church. And it's just amazing when you think about this, how these people come together and they're all in one place and the world is coming to them and People are getting saved, the gospel is going to them, and then they're taking that back to their countries once they've gotten an education that they want or um, or they got the training that they wanted. And so that's what, one of the things that's happening in Canada. It's a very unique place. But I want to show you here real quickly, um, percent of people with a college or university degrees by country, this is a 2016 statistic, and what you see there at the top, this is people aged 25 to 64 years of old, years of age, but it says Canada is number one. 54%, 53, 54% of their people have college, university degrees, which is so incredible. The United States has 45%, going up to 46% there. Um, but you can see how it's all laid out. Sometimes we think that the United States or um, England definitely would have the most people with college degrees, but that's not necessarily so. Canada definitely has that, has a beat. I did just want to throw this in there very quickly. The countries with the most doctoral graduates, and look how far ahead the United States is compared to many other places. Um, a lot of people come to America um, for education, um, especially the higher education, and they also know that when they come here and they get their doctorates, the chances are they can make a lot more money in the United States, and that's why they do it. Um, and so they may start somewhere else, but they'll end up in the United States because of the great opportunities there, and socialized medicine is not a part of it. If you were to get a doctoral degree in that area, you can make a lot more money. Um, but there's also other areas that you can make more money in by having a doctorate as well. 
Continuing on, uh, we see that the Baptist presence in Canada dates back to 1770. Uh, since then, the work has grown to become one of the major Baptist communities. So, since that time of its beginning, the Baptist community in Canada truly thrived. And um, in an unusual way, but it definitely did. And as it did, it started to impact more and more of Canada. And even though it's a huge country, um, the Baptist faith kind of sp spread throughout, and, and we'll talk about that as we go. The growth of the migration of Baptist beliefs started in the East and eventually spread throughout the country because of migrant settlers. And so that's what was happening is people were either coming to know Christ or from the first Great Awakening or Great Awakening in general, and they were coming to Christ, and what they would do is they were settling in places or coming to areas in East Canada. And when they would settle there, then those people wanted to continue on, maybe going to new land or maybe seeking out other opportunities, and they began to move west. And that took this Baptist faith with them and the church work and the and the congregational work as well just began to spread throughout a lot of of course the east uh, east canada area but then it started to go into middle canada and then it eventually will go to the west Macbeth gives three reasons for the diversity of canadian baptists number one the vast landscape many of the baptists in canada were isolated to certain areas and so there was a diversity in what they believed sometimes now there might have been they were baptistic and of course there's set beliefs distinctives that we we use that word sometimes to identify what a baptist really is but they might have had some differences as they went along kind of like we talk about today the general baptist versus particular baptist well they had those as well because it just depended on who was teaching them or who was influencing them or how they got there and so uh, they were isolated in areas and so what they would do is they would teach where they were but what would happen is that there wasn't a lot of influence from other people for quite some time until they started associational work, and then things started to change. Number two, Canadian Baptists often reflected the various origins of England, America, Scotland, etc. So depending on where they came from, they took that Baptist education that they received, and they took it into Canada for a uh, plethora of reasons, but they came into uh, Canada with those origins and said, we're going to live it out this way. And so that's what they did. And then thirdly, the impacts of American and England influences um, or English influences were obvious throughout Canada. So that was clearly, that could clearly be seen. Uh, we talked about the Great Awakening a little bit and how the influence just impacted lives so much. Um, and so we see that American and English influence coming in and it just kind of took over um, throughout Canada, just like it did in America in many ways. And so it was doing that there. American and English influences included churchmanship, doctrinal beliefs, church practices, open versus closed communion, mission work, things like this. And so they dealt with the same issues there with uh, in Canada, like um, Reformed theology versus non-Reformed theology, Calvinism versus Arminianism, those types of things. And one of the areas that they talked a lot about was ecclesiology, uh, examining the doctrine of the church. And that's what the ecclesiology means a study of the church the doctrines of that and so they wanted to um, they wanted to work on these areas but where did they get the influence it came from America it came from England and that's how they uh, received the influence of who should be doing what um, why we do what we do how the church should function those types of things and and the influences were strongly from American and English uh, uh, peoples all right, the migration of Baptist settlers. We talked about that a little bit, but some settlers came as a result of the First Great Awakening. They moved to Eastern Canada to spread the gospel. Other settlers moved to Canada after the Revolutionary War. They wanted to distance themselves from America, America but they took their religion with them. Many Baptists were recruited to go with them as well, and so they were just tired of war. They were tired of fighting. They were tired of all of that, and they said, well, 
we're going to settle in, we're going to go down this road, and many of them uh, decided to settle in Canada, and they had their beliefs with them, and they also recruit other people to be a part of that as well. The major players in Baptist uh, influence were Henry Aline, uh, or Aline, 1748 to 1784, conducted many preaching tours in the Atlantic provinces, and we'll see a picture of him right here. He's on horseback. He's 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 doing a lot of preaching tours through all of that, and so that was it's amazing to see what all he did. And then Ebenezer Moulton, from 1709 to 1783, a gospel preacher that formed a Baptist church in Horton, Nova Scotia, in 1763. The church is often called the Mother Church of Baptist in Canada, and so that's a that's an important thing to know as we talk about. The influence that was made there. So we continue on in 1798, a group of churches formed the Baptist and Congregational Association in Canada. The organization started with Congregational and Baptist churches, but the name was quickly changed to Baptist Association after 1800. Um, the Baptist influence was so strong that the Congregational folks, they just began to kind of die off or just convert over. And so, um, and that's a lot of what was taking place during that time. The association included churches from Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. And so that's what's going on there. We see what we would sometimes call a merge. Churches were coming together from different parts, uh, putting aside maybe some differences, coming for one common cause. Um, and, and that's a lot of what was happening with the associations. Here's here, here's a picture of some of the logos and the associations in Canada. We see the one for Western Canada. We see the one at the top right for Atlantic Canada. And then you see the one, the CBM, there for more of Ontario um, and a Quebec, I believe that is, for the CBM. And so these are some of the uh, logos and the, um, and the associations that are, that are in Canada. Anyways, that's our lesson 26 for today. I uh, hope you have had a great, wonderful day, and we will talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.